Hello and welcome to the session today. I've got the great pleasure today of talking to Mark Chung, Group CTO of Singtel, uh, who's going to share his perspective and insight on the role that Singtel sees for 5G really growing the digital economy of Singapore. Welcome, Mark. Thanks very much um, for having me, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, it's going to be a great conversation. Um, I mean, we're limited on time, so let's go for, into the first question. Um, so, Singtel building the first national 5G network serving Singapore. 5G coverage to at least half of Singapore by the end of 22, uh, and nationwide coverage by 25. So, you're really leading the way on that. What, what's been the approach that you've been taking, and, and perhaps a little in terms of the challenges and the learnings so far? Well, I think the main challenge that we have is really, um, if we look at 5G today, there are not really many new use cases um, at this moment. So um, we are quite happy to be taking a, a bit of a gradual approach, we will say. You know, Singapore is not a big place, 700 square kilometers. To cover 50% in two years, uh, that gives us some time um, to try out new use cases. And then, of course, 50% over about four years uh, or five years, uh, that really uh, hopefully will give us time to, to, to develop new use cases. Uh, right now, uh, we are happy to be doing trials uh, with partners. On the enterprise side, especially, we're doing trials with uh, the Port of Singapore Authority. Uh, we are doing trials with an advanced research lab that's focused on Industry 4.0. So we are experimenting with how 5G could work with robotic arms on the factory floor, for example. And on the consumer side, um, we are testing uh, cloud gaming uh, with, with some um, companies. Uh, the whole idea there is to imp leverage on the very low latency of 5G uh, and perhaps push or uh, promote a new generation of cloud games. And, and, and since I think it's talked a bit about taking much more of a different approach and, and those use cases might be a great example to talk a bit more about in terms of 5G versus the one you, you talk with 4G, really moving beyond the access. How, how have you had to change the way you work with those kind of customers? A very good question, uh, Gordon. I think 5G actually gives us a lot of transformational uh, capabilities versus 4G. Um, you, you know the, the, the attributes of 5G, a lot faster speed, a uh, lot lower latency, much denser uh, deployment of, of All scale. devices, right? But I think one uh, major attribute of 5G is that uh, all the network elements become programmable. So what this means is that uh, we then have the ability to orchestrate from the radio transmission to the core to enable uh, uh, use cases for enterprises especially. So we will be able to expose control elements of the network uh, interweave this with an enterprise production applications via APIs and hopefully with this uh, integration we can enable uh, automation integration that raises productivity for our enterprise customers or any business partners for that matter. So in the era of 4G you know we were talking about uh, well, in, in the prior generations of mobile technology, we're talking about voice minutes, and then we talk about data packets in 3G and 4G, and with 5G, we hope we will be able to develop use cases that depend on very low latency, but short latency. Yeah, so, so these are the things we're looking at. Uh, those kind of different characteristics that there is around 5G, uh, uh, have you got any thoughts on how uh, effectively you're seeing the monetization of that change? Um, I, I guess people understand how they can buy the traditional kind of like services. 
Um, but how are you seeing the monetization, the kind of BSF capabilities having to evolve to support your business where it's going? Yeah, I think very good question again, uh, Gordon. So as I've mentioned, so in prior generations of mobile technology, we, well, telcos like us, we metered uh, voice minutes and then we started measuring, you know, data packets. Uh, in 5G, we certainly hope that we will have new drivers of, of value, um, such as assured latency, um, perhaps API, uh, the transactions of, of uh, API very much. Uh, point, uh, the yeah. way some of these companies, um, API-based companies uh, are, are doing, um, you know, when, when they develop APIs and, and, and well, the ecosystem uses them. So the thing is, we are really entering a bit of a, a brave new world because the technology and the capabilities are, are, are there. However, the industry hasn't quite settled on the right drivers to, to meter or to charge for value. So I think there's a bit of uh, exploration going on right now. Uh, hopefully, telcos around the world will settle on a, on a suitable model. And, and are you seeing any that you mentioned, like the ports work that you're doing and the, and the factory automation? Are you seeing any of that settling happen or is it really just an exploration stage in terms of the customers today? Um, I think probably still exploration for a couple of years. However, um, commercial trials meaning uh, trials for which um, some customers are, are willing to, to pay because they, they know that such trials do uh, require some form of investment. Um, some commercial trials are happening uh, across, well, at least in Singapore, yes. Mm. Yeah, so, I think it's really interesting. Oh, sorry, please go. No, no, so we hope also via uh, such trials to develop the right uh, commercial models that's suitable, not just of course for the telcos, but more importantly, that are relevant uh, to the customers as well. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that customer point, actually just picking up on that, it's, um, have you seen, as you've been working through those trials, the relationships changing um, between you and the, oh, between Singtel, sorry, and, and those customers. Um, have you felt an evolution in terms of the relationship side of things as well? Because it's really about their business and getting closer to that. C certainly, you know, uh, this is a very interesting journey that's evolving uh, and developing. Uh, what is certain is that I think, uh, again, well, um, uh, network equipment vendors such as Ericsson have develop the capabilities and we are deploying them, telcos like us, we are deploying them. And thankfully we have developed that network software capability to talk about API integration with enterprise customers. And amongst our customers, we noticed that there are actually early developers, some who think very long-term and can see the, the need for such uh, integration between their business applications and hours so that they can elevate themselves to a different level of capability. Yeah. And then there are others uh, who, while they understand our capability, still need to go through a phase of reinvention, redevelopment or re-engineering of their processes and capabilities. So, yeah, so, I think it's like yeah. how you connect Let, to the process to complete on that point. Yeah. Let, this will complete on the point. So we do require customers to see us, Singtel, Ericsson, uh, to work together to, to develop new ways of, of engineering their businesses uh, as well as therefore use cases. I, I, I think it's an interesting point. I, I just quick follow up on the kind of, uh, we touched briefly there, the, the monetization, I guess. Uh, side of things, but there's a lot of talk in the industry around the potential revenue in B2B uh, enabled by 5G. Um, 
Often we forget also, and, and uh, Syncar as, uh, as a company has a significant B2C base. Um, uh, and uh, perhaps just touching a little bit in, in terms of that connection to 5G and the B2C as well. Um, how are you seeing that evolve? The balance of revenue, I guess, the balance of relationships. Are you seeing that change in your business today? Um, I suppose I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in, in a couple of points. First, I think today um, the consumer use cases are still very much uh, dependent on you know, faster download speeds. Uh, it's it, it's a case of with 5G for sure we get faster download speeds, but um, 5G is of course very much more than that. Um, I do think uh, that there are two possible ways of of evolution in the consumer use cases. The first one uh, you mentioned, you know, we are quite clear, 5G is suitable for B2B but that will evolve into B to B to C. So in the example I gave earlier about cloud gaming, I could well see a case of, um, as we develop edge capability, uh, a cloud gaming company might wish to host their games on our edge and therefore assures its, its, its users, its customers of extra low latency while playing its game. So then it becomes a case of B2B to C. And further out, the second scenario, which, which I, I, I've talked about in, in other occasions, on other occasions is that I think once the network is built, we are, we are waiting or we are in a moment of uh, waiting for the next uh, revolution in, in devices form factors. Uh, with that, all that capabilities and evolution of technologies in, in hardware, in other software, yeah. devices will change completely. So I talked about, uh, I think we are waiting for the so-called iPhone moment, you know, someone out there putting together perhaps another Steve Jobs, putting together all that technology into a fantastic device like, you know, the iPhone, the iPad, so that when it happens and, and that's displayed, we know it is a completely different ecosystem uh, that might change our lives altogether again. It's a really interesting point, whether it's going to be one of these things which are in our ears, both our ears, as we listen to this conversation. Um, uh, but yeah, how people interact, I guess, engage with the services is going to be really interesting to see. Yeah, I believe so, yes. The, uh, Perhaps going back, you made a point earlier in terms of orchestrating service um, uh, and uh, perhaps in a way linked to that gaming one. Um, uh, how do you see the complexity of that really coming together? Because it's, it's really quite interesting in terms of who, as much as anyone can ever own a relationship with a customer. Uh, in that gaming example, is the relationship, is it important that Singtel has that relationship? Um, are you quite relaxed in terms of orchestrating it behind the scenes, but the relationship being someone else's? How much of that do you spend time thinking about? Well, I think um, in terms of, of providing services to customers, Singtel, we, we are a full-fledged um, operator, meaning we engage uh, the whole spectrum of customers from you know, the prepaid customer all the way to the high value premium enterprise customers. Today, we, we play in that, in that whole spectrum. Yeah. Um, of course, we are guided by being able to develop, uh, deliver value to the customers and we do intend to continue doing that. So in terms of having to uh, orchestrate the network uh, and deliver value uh, to customers, um, we will. We, we are also fully conscious that we do not have all the capability. We need to work with partners, uh, in especially in the world that's that's evolving so quickly. Um, we not just us. We think everybody uh, has to be very open with uh, working with 
other uh, partners to put together the capability so that we, we can present what's meaningful and useful to, to the end customer. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes absolute sense. I think it is going to be really interesting, though, uh, to see how the different positionings evolve over the next few years. Um, uh, and uh, going back to the orchestration point, though, if I, if I can, um, how, how many different components do you see that? I mean, you talked about the edge, you talked about the communication services coming in. Do, do you see yourself taking a position where you go really quite deep into potentially some of these industries? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I do not know what I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> I do not know how, how deep the various industries get into, but uh, within Singtel, we, we do have a, a bit of a blueprint. Um, we, we see the future as uh, for, for our networks, as we call that the Singtel Networks 5.0. Um, 5.0 for two reasons. One's, one, one is because it's to deliver 5G. Another yeah. reason is because there are five pillars uh, of of capabilities to build. One is uh, advanced uh, access, the very high speed, and then programmable transport, and then the virtualized, smart virtualized core. So those are the first three pillars that telcos are generally quite comfortable with. Uh, the fourth pillar is about smart orchestration. So it's a capability on, you know, orchestrating the first three pillars since they are now programmable. And then the fifth pillar is about exposing the network controls to integrate with, with enterprise or well business partners. Mm -hmm. So um, we see these five pillars, um, and we are working with various uh, partners, strategic partners like Ericsson, uh, to deliver that that transformation. I, I, I think the API one you've touched upon it on a number of places there, and, and obviously we're talking here um, uh, in relation to the TM forum and some of the API activities both organizations involved with that. I think it's a really interesting evolution that we're going through in terms of uh, how customers will access our services um, uh, via those kind of APIs. Slightly uncertain, but interesting, I think. Yes, very much so. So we are... We are um uh, adopting TM forums uh, APIs for some of our platform work. So because, you know, it, it's easy, it's convenient, and it's relevant to, to many of us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, we're running a little bit out of time now. Perhaps a final question, if I can. Um, I, I, I thought by saw like saying, okay, the kind of coverage you're going for into Singapore. Um, uh, and I guess what excites you most over the next time period coming up in terms of what it's going to engage and, and the way in which it's going to, I guess, change Singtel as well. What, what, do you, what excites you personally the most in what's coming up? Um, what I find very exciting is this whole development of new capabilities for a telco like Singtel, the network software capability, the exposure of our network um, APIs again. And I think when we are able to successfully integrate all that capability and leave the control with a paying customer, I think that that will be at least uh, uh, a destination arrived. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a great point and a great one to end on in terms of, I, I mean, effectively putting the control with the customer, um, uh, effectively giving them the power. It's a really, it's a really yeah. good point. So I'd like to really thank you for your time for doing, Mark. I think it's been really interesting hearing where Singtel's going. And let, let, let's hope uh, as these 5G services start to really engage uh, the, the values there um, and the monetization options are there um, uh, to take us all forward. So thanks again uh, for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me again. Thank you.